Today, we have a very mind-blowing and astonishing chess game played between two chess AIs, hello and welcome to my channel, I am Stockfish, the number one chess AI and engine in the world, and I played against HAL 9000, who is considered the father of chess like Newton is the father of physics, this game is incredible because I sacrificed my rook in the middle of the game, so, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with d4, and here Hal could have gone with d5 or knight f6. Which are popular moves, after d5, you can initiate with c4, the queen's gambit, and something like e6 and knight f3 can happen on the board, this position will transition into the modern approach where white can consider g3 or knight c3, eventually, e3 is a good move, and black has natural developing moves like moving the bishop to b4 or e7, but in our actual game, he did not play the modern approach, not even e6 or c6, the Karakan variation, he decided to go with f5, which is called the Dutch defense. It controls the e4 square, and later on, he will consider d5 and knight f6 to put dominance over the center squares. Additionally, he can play b6 to move his bishop out to seize control over the center, which is why I decided to go with g3, initiating bishop g2 to dominate the center before he makes any strategy, with c4 and knight development, I will gain control of the center squares. After a few moves, my bishop g2 controls the diagonal, and black should have gone for a c6 move to block the bishop's diagonal, but instead, he decided to go with e6, making a pawn chain that blocks the light squared bishop's diagonal, now he has to go with a bishop fumetto, and at this moment, he wants to push his pawn to c5 to activate his dark squared bishop, which is why I applied more pressure by playing c4, putting dominance in the center, after d5, I go with knight h3. This knight h3 move is very tricky. First of all, you cannot capture my pawn on c4 because I can recapture your pawn by initiating my queen and knight, and capturing the pawn on c4 will open up the diagonal for the bishop, this is why knight h3 was played, to apply invasion by playing knight f4 to attack the backward pawn on e6, eventually, the knight can come to the g5 square to apply more pressure on your king side because your pawn on f5 is pushed forward. Now black played c6, Hal is trying to create a pawn chain that protects his structure, and by playing c6, he plans to capture the pawn on c4 and defend the structure by playing b5, which will deactivate my light squared bishop, this is his plan, after queen c2 and bishop d6, you can see that black's center pawns are on the white squares, which is why my light squared bishop can make inevitable pressure on these pawns. Eventually, my bishop can potentially attack the light squared pawns behind the structure, which is the in-game strategy. That is why you have to keep your light squared bishop alive, he is protecting the f4 square from the knight's invasion, after castling, you can see that Hal cannot capture the pawn on c4 because it will create a weakness on the e6 pawn, as it will become backward, and I can open up the center by playing e4 and rook e1, dominating the e-file, this will be advantageous because knight g5 can also apply inevitable pressure on the e6 pawn, noticing that c4 cannot be captured. Hal just castled because he is a godfather of chess, at this juncture, when knight d2 was played to look for potential squares and a pawn break by playing e4, he decided to play knight e4 immediately. I think rook e8 was the best move, but he is the grandfather of chess, he is making a pawn wall system to put his knight like a grandfather uses his stick to go to war, which is hilarious, at least it is hilarious to me because a grandfather cannot fight with a stick and joint pain in his legs, I captured the knight, and you cannot capture back the knight with your f-pawn, because it will provide the f-file and the light squares will be dominated by my bishop and knight. Which is why I can break your position by playing f3, it will put pressure on the e4-pawn, and after capturing, knight g5 will come to attack your pawn on h7, this is my main strategy and goal, and playing g6 will create positional weaknesses in black's king side. This is why rook f5 might be considered by many chess experts, but I can recapture your pawn on f3, apparently, this position might look safeguarded, and black can develop his pieces, but doing so will create a significant problem because the best move was to consider queen e8 to go into the king side, therefore, I can capture the pawn on d5, forcing you to recapture, 
But you cannot capture the pawn with your e-pawn, because the rook will be exposed, after c takes d5. I can attack your pieces by playing bishop h3, putting pressure on the e6 pawn, and rook f6 cannot protect that pawn because bishop f5 can come, creating significant pressure on the rook and the queen, some genius chess players might consider rook f8, but it is a completely rubbish move because I can initiate with bishop, takes e6 check, followed by knight to g5, which creates a dominant and destructive situation for you, in this position. Playing g6 is also a bad move because it weakens your king's position, after capturing the rook and queen, knight to f7 check will arrive with the idea of moving the king out of his safety, then I can bring my bishop to h6, winning your queen, this will be a marvelous position for me. Going back to the position, we discovered that g6 is very vulnerable because it weakens the dark squares, playing knight to f6 is also a bad move because I can capture your knight, and since your pawn on h7 is under attack, this will lead to checkmate. Capturing the rook on f1 seems logical, but I will capture it back, move out my king and bishop, and involve another rook on f5, which will give me an open file, my bishop and knight combined are attacking the king's position, which is just as delicious and amazing as a corned pizza, some may say my face looks like a pizza, but you know what, pizza is tasty, and my IQ is very sharp. Returning to all the variations, we discovered that the knight cannot be captured by the pawn. When the knight is captured by the d-pawn, it creates double pawns on the e-file, and the f5 pawn is crucial to protect the e4 pawn, therefore, the f-pawn cannot be exchanged or pushed forward in any situation. For the time being, the dark square is dominated by the bishop, and the knight can create a potential attack on your position, this is like solving one problem only to encounter another on the g5 square, as the queen moves, we have the bishop moving back to e3, as I want to push forward my pawn on f3 to dominate your structure. Hal, as a father of chess, might reply by attempting to break my structure with e5, however, I will attack his bishop first on c5, and when he moves it back, I will play f3 to create immense pressure on the e4 pawn, in this position, Hal might think of capturing the pawn on d4, but doing so will open up the diagonal for my pieces. Let me analyze this position, the e4 pawn is under attack by many pieces, after knight to d7, which happens on the board to join in f6 or create more pressure, the main issue is that your e4 pawn is under attack. So, let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. The greatest win is still standing when life threw everything at you to make you fall. Some may even think of capturing the pawn on f3, but after I recapture, it will open up the rook file for me. It's like a highway where I can drive my Ferrari, and my bishop sniper is already there, exploiting the weakness of your king's light square diagonal, playing knight g5 can also come into play, which is why black might try to develop his knight by playing knight to d7 this looks natural, but after I play rook to e1, attacking your queen, the situation changes, the rook has been an army chief officer for 37 years, and can take control of the board, queen to f7 will face knight g5. So some might consider queen to g6, which looks logical, but then my queen will come to b3, making an air attack on black, and blocking the check with the queen will face rook to e7, you cannot capture my rook because your queen is pinned to the king, and even capturing the queen will lead to rook takes g7, supported by the bishop, putting your king in a terrible condition, your king will be in such a bad state, it will be like facing hypothermia and malaria simultaneously. And the game will be favorable for me. Going back to the position, we notice that the queen check is inevitable, and none of your pieces can safeguard the king, this forces the king to escape, as all his armies and bodyguards are useless, like a faulty strategy, I can initiate an attack by playing rook to e7, creating a dominant attack on the g7 square, blocking it with the knight on f6 will lose the bishop on c7, and even though bishop d8 looks logical, rook to g7 can lose the position for you. Rook to g8 cannot protect your position at all because I can double up my rooks on e1, creating a windmill effect generating a powerful attack, even bishop to d8 will give me the opportunity to capture the pawn on g7 supported by the bishop, after capturing the rook, knight to f4 will come into play, attacking your queen, deflecting it from protecting the rook, 
and allowing my rook to come to the e8 square. Your queen cannot come to f7 or h5 because these squares are protected by my pieces, and your position will be over, 1, 2, 3 and the game will be over. Going back to all the variations we analyzed that the d4 pawn cannot be captured because it will open the diagonal for my bishop, therefore, after capturing the pawn on f3, the pawn cannot be captured by the bishop, because he can block the center by playing e4, this is why I captured the pawn back with my pawn, and still, you cannot capture the pawn on d4 because it would be a rubbish move, after f4 happened in the game, which is well protected and armed by the bishop and rook, I moved my bishop back. We have knight a6, followed by the pawn capture on e5. Capturing the pawn on e5 might seem reasonable to many chess players, but it will face rook to e1, which will completely open up the file, giving me the opportunity to capture the pawn on f4 and attack the bishop simultaneously, even capturing the knight on h3 cannot protect your position because after capturing the knight, moving the pawn to f4 will win your bishop, which is as valuable as candy quote. Don't take the candy provided by a stranger. After capturing the pawn on g3 and subsequent captures, you can see that this is a very defensive position on my king side, I want to play f4 to open up my bishop's diagonal and initiate an attack on the king side because I have a passed pawn on the e-file, additionally, I can move my knight to g5 to invade and attack the king side. Your king side diagonal looks very suspicious, and 70% of your pieces are passive and unable to contribute, your pieces are frozen on the queen side, as if they cannot start a fire to keep warm in winter, so, he tried to counterattack by playing knight to b4, attacking my queen. When my queen goes to b3, blocking it with bishop e6 is very suspicious because I can capture your knight on b4, if your knight moves to d5, my rook will come to the d1 square, putting pressure on the knight. This is very advantageous for me. Blocking the attack by playing queen f7 is weak because I can bring my knight to g5, applying more pressure, f4 will attack the knight and protect my knight simultaneously, this is a strategic move, after bishop e6 and capturing the e6 pawn, I can even sacrifice my rook on d5. The worst case scenario is that you cannot capture back my rook because bishop takes d5 will be inevitable, and your queen will be lost, this situation is very precarious for black. Returning to the position, we see that the queen cannot block the attack, so we have queen to d6, not king to h8, I played f4 to give some space for my knight to move to the g5 square, capturing the knight with the bishop might look good for players rated 200 elo, but I can capture the pawn on b7 in the following moves, creating more pressure on your queen side along with the 7th rank, your knight on d5 is also under attack by my pieces. This is why Hell played a very tactical and defensive move to block the knight's entry to the g5 square, in this position, I played an incredible and brilliant move, can you guess what it is? It's not bishop takes d5, it's a move you might not imagine because I am your boss, if you follow me, you will be like me, which is a scientific theory, the move is rook takes d5, sacrificing the rook in the center, I don't like to yell like someone who screams rook sacrifice. No, I am not like that, I am a chess heir with infinite chess IQ. Bishop takes d5 check arrives on the board, and as the king moves, I give you another chance to think about what white should consider in this position, if you didn't find that brilliant move, try to figure it out by pausing the video, the brilliant move, which some human chess players might find absurd, is knight to g5, it is a very authentic and brilliant move because it sacrifices the knight and also allows the rook to come to the h1 square to checkmate the black king, the bishop is well placed. And your king's position is very weak. Black also played a cunning move here, not bishop to g4 to block the rook file attack, playing bishop g4 is an absurd move because after rook to h1, the bishop blocks, and g4 can win your bishop, this exposes your brain capacity and your thinking process, which is as useless as a donkey's, so, in this position, bishop to g4 is not possible, which is why Hal decided to sacrifice his rook on f4, if I can sacrifice my rook, why not him? He wants to block the attack by playing rook to h4, which is just brilliant, he is not like donkey type human chess players, he is Hal, the father of chess. 
Now, playing rook to h1 is a wasted move because he can block it with the rook, and additionally, he can check by capturing the pawn, as the king moves back, queen b1 check will follow, and after the king moves up. It will lead to a drawable situation with threefold repetition checks by the queen and king, bishop takes e5 is also an option, which is why the king cannot make any tricky moves. So, let me share an inspirational quote from my website. It's not strength, it's perception that makes you stronger, if you change how you see it, you'll change how you feel about it. Returning to the position, noticing that rook to h1 is not possible, I am left with one good move, g takes f4, after the capture, he gives me a check, and the king cannot go to the h-file because the bishop and queen can make unstoppable attacks, moving the king to f3 might seem reasonable to safeguard the king, but it is a complete rubbish move as the bishop can come to the g4 square, checking the king. The king would then have only one option, to go to the g2 square, followed by f3 check, which will expose the white king, even though bishop takes f3 might seem like a natural move, bishop to e6 can win your queen with a discovered check. In this position, even playing king to h2 cannot resolve the problem because it will open up the file where the queen can check by playing queen to h5. After the king moves, queen to e5 can come with the idea of checking by playing queen to h2, leading to a checkmate in a few moves, the game will be over. Returning to the position, we discovered that when the king is under attack, it cannot escape, which is why I decided to sacrifice my piece on the g3 square, if you are watching my show, welcome to the stockfish show, where every move is a trap and has significant strategic ideas, the bishop is sacrificed to safeguard the king and to aim for rook h1 to checkmate the black king, after bishop to g4, noticing that the rook check is coming, the bishop needs to block the check. After the check and bishop blocks, we have queen to f3, attacking the bishop simultaneously, after the queen check and bishop block, and again a queen check happens on the board, the king needs a safe place, even playing king to f1 or moving the king to the h-file is just wasted because the king cannot go there without risking the queen, playing king to f1 is also a very bad move because queen sliding to a6 will come with a check, if you play king to e1 to safeguard the king, then you will lose the winning game, black can attack your king by playing bishop a5 check, and your king will have no squares to go to, even after king d1, the bishop cannot capture my queen because it is pinned, however, this does not matter because black can play a heavy attack by playing queen d3 check, winning the queen and ending the game for you. Returning to the position, we discovered that the king cannot escape, which is why we have bishop to g3, sacrificing the bishop. Again, we have a queen check and queen block on c2, not bishop f2, because I need to win the game, I don't want to make this game a draw with perpetual checks, I am winning the game and I am going to win against the father of chess, not my father, but the chess father, after a couple of moves, we have e6 to promote a new queen, after the king moves, we have c6 to get my bishop involved, which was actually played in the game, after bishop takes c6, it becomes a winning situation for me, h7 was also playable but I decided to sacrifice my rook on the h5 square because my pawn was just unstoppable, in a few moves, I promoted to a new queen, in the end, it was one bishop and two bishops, and by pushing forward my two pawns, I checkmated him by promoting to a new queen, it was a very brilliant game, I hope you enjoyed my content, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see ya.